Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. The subject here is Photoshop as you can see by the Photoshop logo but we're going to look at the preparation required to print large canvas wrap prints. Now the reason this subject has come up is because recently we had the inside of our house painted so we've taken the opportunity to pick out some of our images and have them made into large canvas wraps. Now given my Photoshop skills I wanted to prepare these images for printing myself and I thought it might be interesting if we take you through the process I used. Now the very first thing that I did was to contact the printers that we have used before just to check on their maximum print sizes for a canvas wrap. I wanted to make sure that they could in fact print me a six foot long canvas wrap from a panoramic shot that I took earlier this year. And I also needed to know what size I had to allow for the wrap part of the canvas. The printers told me I would have to allow 50 millimeters, and that's almost two inches where I came from. Now it doesn't sound very much even on a large print, but that can make quite a bit of difference to the composition after all, if you lose four inches on the length and four inches on the width, that's got to have some impact on the image you want printed. Now as you may expect with the image you can currently see on screen this was my first choice. One of the first things I did was to try to determine where the canvas wrap was going to hang. Then I could measure the wall and the space I had to determine the size I wanted. I didn't want the wrap to be too big for example but when we hold a print in our hands they can often appear quite large but when we put them up on the wall they can appear very small. So I decided to have this image here printed 48 inches long on the width which would give me 37 inches on the height but of course I have to make allowance for that 2 inches on the left, right, top and bottom or 50 millimeters is more accurate. So the very first thing I really needed to do here was perhaps using Photoshop's rulers and guides to mark out that 50 millimeter wrap around all four sides to give me an idea of how that would impact on the content of the image. Now the rulers in Photoshop can be found in the view menu at the top left of the screen but the shortcut key control R, a nice easy one to remember. Once the rulers appear, we need to right click within the rulers and we can choose how the rulers are going to measure. At the moment, as you can see, they're set for pixels and we've got a number of choices, but the most convenient here is millimeters. What I can then do is go to the guides and I can drag out a guide, just click and drag, and I can set that at the 50 millimeter position. Now given the canvas wrap we're making, I don't suppose a millimetre left or right is going to make a great deal of difference. But here's a way to get this absolutely perfect. It's a little dodge that I discovered myself and I use it quite often. Now the first thing I need to know is what is the resolution of the image I'm working with. Now I happen to know that it's 300 pixels per inch but in case you need to find out go to your image menu at the top left image size and what we're interested in is where it says resolution 300 pixels per inch because I'm going to make a new blank canvas 50 millimeters square but I need to make it at 300 pixels per inch. So I'm going to cancel that and go to my File New option. Over here I'm going to choose 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, but I want 300 pixels per inch and when I click Create there we can see a white square. Using the Move tool from the top of the toolbox I'm going to drag out the tab because I want to click drag and drop that white square 
into my artwork and I can close this down because what I can do let me move that guide out of the way I can move this square and it will snap into the corner of my artwork I can hit control zero to make sure I've got my artwork square on screen now what we've got here is a snap command within Photoshop which allows me to pick up this guide here and as I drag it to the left you'll see it snap to the edge almost like it's magnetic which makes what I'm about to do very quick and easy because I can do the top one then I can move my square down to the bottom right corner and I can drag out another guide to do the upright on the right and one from the top and there when I turn that off there I have my 50 millimeters all the way round and straight away we can see that we've got a little bit of a problem here so if I sent this particular piece of artwork to the printers I'm going to lose the bottom of the glasses in the reflection in the foreground and I don't want to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add canvas to the outer edge of my image I'm going to do that around all four sides but I'm going to do the left and right first so just for the moment I'm going to remove those guides I can do that by going to the view menu and choosing clear guides and I'll even get rid of the rulers just for a moment because what I'm going to do here is let's get rid of that square too if we need another one later we'll create it I'm going to remove the lock to separate my image from the canvas because I'm going to increase the canvas 50 millimeters without affecting my image and to do that I need to remove that lock so now I can go up to my image menu and choose canvas size and now using this relative box or with the relative box ticked I can say okay add 50 millimeters to the left right top and bottom which means here I've got to double that up and put in 100 when I click OK and I'll hit control 0 what we've effectively got is exactly the same as before we've got our 50 millimeters all the way round but of course we haven't lost any of the image now I think I'll bring those guides back into place but I think they're going to be quite easy to do now because if I hit control R to bring up the rulers as I drag the guides out they'll snap to the edge of the image so we don't need our square anymore now the reason I've done that is because I'm thinking about which part of the image and where I want the whole of the image to be positioned because I'm getting the feeling I need my image shunted along to the right just a little bit I'm going to try that I've got the move tool selected here I'm going to use my right arrow keys and I'm going to shunt this across and I'm just trying to look at the image in conjunction with the guides there I don't want it to go too far that way but maybe a little way I could perhaps even decide to shunt upwards a little bit but I think that should be about right so what I need to do now if I'm going to have my wrap in these areas which are currently clear I've got to create pixels to fill those areas so that's our next task to do that we can use cut and paste but sometimes content aware is going to do the job for us so let's try that first I'm going to pick up my rectangular marquee tool I'm going to select the area I want filled I'll select it from there I think once I've got it selected I'm going to go to my edit menu at the top left I'm going to choose fill and from the contents here I'm going to use content aware it's going to take just a few seconds for Photoshop to work its magic and if it gets it right it can be quite impressive I'll hit control D to remove that selection and let me move that guide out of the way now because I need to look along the edge here to see if I'm going to be happy with the join that it's made 
Now I don't think that's going to be too bad at all. Remember this is going to be a, a wrap, so we're going to have a texture on this, a canvas wrap. I've got a little area there, but I doubt that will be seen, but one touch of the healing brush would fix that anyway. So that's a good job done on the left hand side, but I've got to do much the same on the right. Well, it was successful there, so let's use the same thing on the right. Same again, edit, fill, content aware. We'll let Photoshop do its work. Control D will always remove a selection. Now I'll take a very close look at the edges here, but I can tell you that when I did this before, I've already done that and there really isn't any problem at all. But of course we've got the top and the bottom to fill. Now we could do that in exactly the same way, but let's do it slightly different to give us some slight variation. What I can do is to create a new blank layer above my image, and then I'm going to drag it to the bottom of the layered stack, because what I'm going to do is to clone the blue from this image right at the base, and then we can flood this and see how that works. So let's pick up the eyedropper tool from the toolbox and right down here I need the blue right close to the edge and that appears as the foreground colour. And over on the right hand side we can see we've got a new blank layer so I can flood that with colour with Alt Backspace. Now we've got the top to deal with but we only need to look at the base here and the base is looking pretty good but we'll remove the guide in a moment or two and we'll take another look at that. Let's think about the top for a moment. Well perhaps we can do exactly the same. Let's pick up the eyedropper tool and sample the green from the top and now we can see that as the foreground in our colour picker. But if we flood the background of course we're going to mess up the bit down the bottom. So I think what I'll do here is select my gradient tool. There you can see the option I've got. I've got the linear gradient, so I'm just going to make a straight gradient across the top. I'm working from this option, which is foreground to transparent. So I'm going to just draw a line down here. And it's going to make the top solid green, the bottom transparent, but with a bit of luck, it should give us exactly what we're looking for. Now as you can see I've just put my left hand guide back into position but we can see that at this size the artwork looks pretty good. The one thing we need to remember at the top and the bottom is we've added computer generated colour. Now in normal circumstances I would suggest that we add a very small amount of Gaussian monochrome noise to any computer generated color that we add to an image. But given that this is going to be a canvas print and we're going to have a texture on the side, I don't think it's going to be that important. I think all we need to do is to take a look around the edge to make sure that the content aware I use for the left and right has worked okay and also the top and bottom. Now I've just saved what I've done so far, just calling it Demo1, because what I'd like to do is to remove those guides via the View menu, so we'll clear those, because I want to zoom in on the left hand side. Now we did see a little problem down here, and if you wanted to deal with that then perhaps maybe I would go to my clone tool on this particular occasion. I would be making my brush about that size and maybe cloning from that sort of position and just going over the top of that just a little bit just to merge that in and that's all I really need to do there. Now just to speed things up a little bit as you can see by the spinning round of the screen I've just moved the image over to the right hand side and the content aware fill there has done a superb job. I'm looking carefully along the bottom edge of my image and I can just about see a very very fine line along here and if I was to move up to the top 
I can see a very very fine line along there too. Now that's going to be pretty easy to put right and to do that and to make sure my artwork looks perfect but remember the image is going to be wrapped at this point so even if I left that I doubt we'd be able to see it but given that this wrap is going to cost me a couple of hundred dollars then let's get the artwork perfect. I'm going to select the image and apply a layer mask. I'm going to go over to the left hand side I'm going to select black as my foreground color. I'm going to select a brush just a soft standard basic brush. I'll make the size of my brush quite large about that. Looking up at the top of the screen I've got a flow rate of 5% I think I'll increase that to about 10 and I'll just mask along the top there and as I'm doing that you can see that line disappears. I can make my brush slightly smaller but you can see it only takes a few seconds to do that. Now as you can see by the changing of the screen again I brought you down to the bottom right corner because we added pixels down the bottom and you may just be able to see a very faint line here. So using our mask and our brush spraying black gently with a 10% flow all I've got to do is to wipe along here and it disappears in an instant. You'll notice I've got another a little problem here I'm just going to make my brush slightly smaller and what I did here was just brush back and just make it look as though that reflection there was just petering out. But moving along the rest of this just to make sure it's blended in nicely and I'll do this gently all the way to the left hand side. So there I have my final artwork ready to go to the printers but I've reapplied the guides because what I would suggest is don't rush off to the printers right away. Save this on your computer, open it up again tomorrow morning and look very very carefully around the entire image because not forgetting we're about to invest a couple of hundred dollars to have a large canvas wrap print done. The last thing we want is to get it back from the printers and then spot something we should have dealt with before we even sent it. Now perhaps one of the most obvious things we could miss are those little dust marks we sometimes see in the skies of our images especially if we're an SLR user. Nothing worse than looking at our artwork on screen at the size we can see here is going to be somewhat different when we're looking at a print 48 inches by 37 inches. So they're the sort of things we really should be looking for and put in right now. Now I've got my artwork saved in its layered form here but I'm quite happy now to move on. I'm going to flatten this ready to send to the printers and I would save this giving it a slightly different name so that when I look at this in the morning I do have the opportunity to jump back to the layered version if I really needed to. Here I have a panorama which was created with a stitch of about six or seven different images and I wanted this one printed as a very large canvas wrap. The image itself is 73.5 inches in length, 21 inches in height at 300 pixels per inch. At the time of recording this is currently at the printers but I expect to get a phone call tomorrow or the day after to go and collect it. Now with this image I chose a slightly different tack. Rather than make allowance for the 50 millimeters we're going to need on the left right top and bottom there is another option where we can add the 50 millimeters to the size much as we did previously with the glasses but then we create that wrap in a neutral color. Now we could clone a color from the image as I did before or we could just use black, charcoal gray, white or off-white. That's the beauty of Photoshop. We can decide. So with this image I want to remove the lock 
of the thumbnail up at the top right remember when we click the lock it disappears but what we've effectively done is to separate the canvas from the image which means I can increase the size of the canvas without affecting the image we can do that by going up to the top left of the screen image canvas size we need 50 millimeters left right top and bottom so 100 millimeters in all Photoshop will automatically distribute that for us I'll hit control 0 there we can see the 50 millimeters all the way around now we need to decide what color we're going to flood into that area and I think we'd be better off with a new blank layer dragged beneath the image itself so that we fill this with the color but we only see it around the edges here now I wasn't too sure about using a jet black or a pure white for the edge border but that's the beauty of working in Photoshop at least we can try it I've got black as the background color in my color picker to the bottom of the toolbox so with control backspace I can flood that area with black and we can sort of imagine how that's going to look when that black edge is at right angles to the print and I could do the same with white using alt backspace now I think white may be a little bit too bright and it would draw our attention maybe away from the image and it's a bright colorful image so I think black or a charcoal gray is going to work quite well but I could take a sample from the image as well but if I click the color picker I'm going to pick up a charcoal color and alt backspace will flood that that doesn't look too bad but I think it needs to be slightly darker so I'll go back to my color picker and I can gradually change that until I get to an edge which I think projects the image perfectly now this canvas wrap is going to cost me about two hundred and fifty dollars so the last thing I want to happen is to get this back from the printers and then realize that the edge color that I've chosen isn't the absolute perfect choice I'd rather live with the image for a couple of days until I am sure and then send it off to the printers now here I have another image where if we allow parts of the image to become the wrap around the 50 millimeters top bottom left and right I think it's taking something away from the image I think the cottage is a little bit too tight to the left we're losing the bottom of the little mound in front of us the heather and we're losing the tree on the top right so in this instance once again we can try something a little different and this was suggested to me by the printers themselves with the spinning round of the screen you can see I've speeded up the process just a little bit because what I've done here is exactly the same as what we did with the previous image I removed the lock from the thumbnail and I've added the 50 millimeters on the left right top and bottom and I think straight away you can see it improves the picture no end so what are we going to do around the edge well we can use a system which the printer calls mirroring I'm not sure it's quite as good as content aware but it's an option what we do is to make a selection of the top part so we can take that top part something like that we can copy that control J you can see I've copied that to a new layer well Photoshop has done that automatically then we use the edit menu and our transform tools to flip that area over there that you can see there upside down let me demonstrate that with edit transform flip vertical then with the move tool selected I can move that into place and as you can see it becomes a mirror image now the printers state that when it's actually wrapped around the edge you don't notice it at all so let's try to do the bottom in the same way we'd need to select the image again we'll do the same thing control J 
flip it upside down with edit transform flip vertical and move it in position once we got to that sort of position I suppose we could merge them all together so that when we do a cut for the left and right we're cutting from the top as well so to do that we can select all three if we wish just right click and choose to merge the layers so let's have a go on the right hand side almost selected the wrong part then something like that control J now we want edit transform flip horizontal of course and we can move that in position and finally this bit here need to select the original layer first before we hit control J and again well it certainly is an option now you'll notice we seem to have a line down the right hand side and the left well if you feel the need to just select the right hand edge and nudge it in one click let me select my move tool from the toolbar I'll use my cursor control keys to just nudge it one pixel to the left and the one beneath I'll nudge that one pixel to the right and then I think I will just merge all of those together or I could in fact flatten them for printing now despite the fact that the image looks a little bit odd at the top left corner once we put the guides back in place and we see what in fact is going to be wrapped I think it would work pretty well now as you can see here once again to save a bit of time I've added the 50 millimeter guide so you can see the front face of the canvas wrap is going to look much better the buildings better placed this is better placed the trees better placed the only dodgy area is this here but I think if we just picked up our clone tool and we just did a little bit of cloning here I don't think we would have any problem whatsoever now the reason I don't think that's going to be a problem up there is because this area here is going to be on top of the canvas wrap so once the wrap is hung on the wall we are hardly likely to see that at all but of course if we try to use the same techniques and something like this happened at the bottom then I think all we would do would be to copy some of the sky from up here and just transpose that over to the left hand side let me show you what I would do very very quickly I'd probably pick up my I think I'll just take the rectangular marquee tool and I would take a selection of sky here and I would copy that to a new layer control J selecting the move tool from the toolbox I can drag that sky to the left and I think I'd probably drag it completely to the left something like that now what we could do is flip the sky over if we wanted it to blend a little bit easier here and we've used this technique before too so edit transform flip horizontal so there's the sky I'm going to use I'm going to put it into position something like that now I'm just going to blend this in by adding a layer mask to the right of layer 1 up at the top right there making sure I've got black as my foreground color my basic soft edge brush I'll increase the size of the brush so it just covers that patch I've got a flow of 10% so if I just wipe my brush over that area I think that would get us out of trouble so that 50 millimeter of size that we need to make allowance for around all four sides of our image does impact on the image itself particularly the composition and in most cases I have found the image needs a little tweak one way or another but we've got three ways we can approach this 
we can add that 50 millimeters of space all around as clear canvas we can flood that with a neutral color we can use content aware fill or maybe the printer's idea of copy and paste and use that mirror effect to bring this video to a close take a look at this image which I've just added 50 millimeters of canvas all the way around but then I've used content aware fill to fill in that blank canvas now we can see some evidence of that down at the center bottom you can just see a slight repeat of the reflection of the boat but don't forget it's going to be folded and pulled around the wood frame there so you're not going to see that and a similar effect at the center top but once again once we see this with the guides in place you'll notice that this is going to be at the top so we're hardly likely to see that at all so with just a little bit of thought and the wonders of Photoshop we retain the composition and the presentation of our image and we get our canvas wrap I think that with our photography and the learning process that goes with it every little helps so I hope this video did help in a small way there's more to our photography than we think at times and it's nice to know how we can use Photoshop to present and prepare images for printing or just for on-screen presentation we need to remember that there's quite a lot of creativity locked up in image presentation in fact I do have two sets of videos on presentation one within Photoshop and one within audio visual via pictures to exe slideshow software come along to our website and look for our Photoshop Creative Cloud video list look for presentation under Photoshop and you can watch the introduction video you'll also find another set of videos in our pictures to exe 9 tutorials called presentation techniques if you're a YouTube viewer I'll place a link to both of these below don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube and hit the notification bell so you're informed when I put up new videos.